students, welcome back to my new Country Farmhouse studio. I'm Marne and I have a project to share with you today. I have been on Pinterest and I have been scanning some gifts for Christmas and looking for new ideas. I've even been trolling YouTube for all kinds of um, things and I see the gifts to November. So I thought this might be a fun one and something a little bit different. And I know that you can do this with me. So I've got things all prepared, but I wanna show you my little sketchings that I've got. So I make little drawings and things when I get on Pinterest because I need the ideas. So I, I found this one idea and it is a kitty cat. And um, this isn't really hard. I don't have a pattern I draw. So uh, what I have drawn up is I have drawn up this little kitty here and I'm gonna kind of move you down because I have kind of drawn out a pattern for him. And I think this is gonna be a really fun little uh, bag that I'm going to do. So let me get this positioned so you can kind of see what I've got going on here. So this is my drawing and I took a paper sack and I kind of um, sketched him out. So you can see the butt part here. <laughs> It's a cat butt. So if y'all watched the cat butt um, coaster videos here a few years ago that people crocheted, those were really fun. This is kind of a play on that, but a little something different and it's applique. So what I've done is I took a paper stack and I've pretty much made a horseshoe shape and I put little feet on it. The picture um, didn't have any feet. It was just a little horseshoe um, kind of thing. And then I drawed out a little tail and it kind of like a question mark. So you, if you wanna play with um, doodling, this is not to be perfect, it's just doodled. So his, yeah, his tail looks like a little question mark and I taped it onto the back so I have one solid piece to cut out. And then the head, I just took a circle from something circular and drew a circle. And then I just kind of added the ears. But before I cut out my circle, I folded it in half so I can cut, you know, I picked out the best ear that I liked and then I cut it in half so I've gotten both ears the same. So that, that really helps too. Same way with um, this horseshoe for the butt. You can fold the paper in half, which I'm gonna kind of show you here, I've got it taped. But if you fold it in half and cut it out, that makes sure that your legs and everything is nice and uniform. So really, it's really simple. Just a simple like shadow kind of play. And then of course the eyes, I kind of shaped onto the mouth with my, my pencil and where I want my nose to go. I know I want it in the middle of that fold line, so I just draw a little triangle. And I think I might put some button eyes on it because I have lots of buttons in my button therapy. And of course his mug, I might make a different color. So I'm gonna show you what I got here for um, fabrics. And really I'm just using what I have for my bag. Uh, somebody, I think somebody sent me this, this um, plaid fabric and it's kind of stiff and I thought it would make a really good bag. So. I have enough here to make another bag. So um, I've already got my pieces cut, I'm gonna move my pattern here, and I've cut the, the outside of my bag, and I cut this 15 and a half inches wide by 17 and a half inches tall. Um, so that's gonna be the bag. And this is just gonna be a flat bag. I'm not gonna box it because I, I have a fold on the bottom, so I won't even need to fold the bottom. It's already got a it's already got a fold on there, so I just left this folded in half. I just want this to be a fun, cute little bag that maybe you can throw up, or you can throw together, not throw up, and um, maybe, you know, fold it up and put it in your purse when you're going somewhere. And I know um, if any of you live in New York State, you have to carry your own bags to the grocery stores and to Walmart, whatever, because they don't give you bags unless they're paper, and paper bags suck because they tear. But when I do get a paper bag, I do save them because they're fun to use for patterns. And I'm a doodler. Um, any of you that know me, you know, know my chalkboards and things, I like to doodle. So this is kind of the one thing I do. I do my own patterns. Um, maybe Jim can make up a pattern for me. I don't know, or I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm just, I'm just a doer. So um, for my liner, this is another donated fabric and I love this color. It has this light green with a darker green flowers in it, and it really matches up nicely with this plaid, so it's gonna make a really nice liner. So I've got that piece all cut out as well. And this, the liner is also on the fold, and I cut this 15 and a half inches wide, but I cut the liner um, 18 and a half inches tall because when I sew this liner to my outside of my bag, I want the liner to show on the top of my bag to kind of give it a little contrast. And for the handles, I already have the pieces cut for those. 
I had some strips of plaid left and I had a strip of this um, liner piece and these are three inches wide and I'm going to sew these together to make handles. So I'll make the plaid part on the bottom of the, bottom of the handle and I'll make the flower part on the top. So it'll really all go together and match. So what I'm gonna start with is my pieces for my cat. And the main body of my cat is gonna be this, this gray, I don't know, it has like light gray flowers and it's really pretty. So I thought this would make a great cat body. And then the lower part of his face, um, where I draw this little line on here, the bottom here, I'm going to make that this light gray so it just kind of contrasts off. And then I need a little piece of scrap for a pink nose, so I'll probably just cut a little piece off. This is all I need. So I just got in my scrap bin and just kind of, you know, picked out some fabrics that I want my kitty. So his main body of the kitty is going to be this darker gray, face will be light gray, and the pink. And on the butt, there's a little heart. <laughs> And you can put this wherever you want, but I just thought it was cute right in the butt, you know, because it's, so I'll probably find a little scrap of red and make a little red heart, but you could also move it off to the side if you don't want it to look too naughty. So it's totally up to you. This is a fun thing. And I do have a cat lover in my life that maybe this would make a great gift for. And when you make a bag, you can always put little extra goodies in there too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get started on um, tracing my pattern out onto some heat and bond lights and I'm going to um well trace it out and then I'm going to um rough cut it out and I'm going to adhere it to my fabric and iron it on and then I'm going to cut it out and then I'm going to sew it to my bag so I'm going to go ahead and get that started and I will get back with you I've got my light box here all set up this is what you need heat and bond light you can get this at any craft store it's bumpy on one side, it's paper on the other. So um, I'm just gonna kind of take my magnets off here. These things like to stick together. And oops, we're gonna start off with my kitty here. And I'm just gonna kind of lay him on the light box. And then I'm going to put the rough side of the paper down because I want to trace him on here and I want to get him close to the edge because I want to save as much of my my paper as I can. I'm going to turn him around so, so I'm going to kind of position him on here and you can kind of see how easy this is. And if you don't have a light box, you know, you can use a window or, you know, you should, you'll probably be able to see through the paper pretty easily. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of trace this out. My dog is begging for cookies because he just went outside. Oh, and I need my little, these little magnets hold. Of course they stick to everything, they stick to my rotary blade. This will help hold my paper so I can trace it without too much of a problem. And I'm just gonna kinda go around. And little pieces that I don't use, I save for smaller things. Like I'll need a little piece for the nose. And when I put my put this on my fabric, it's gonna act like a glue. So when I iron it to my fabric, it's gonna stay in place so I can sew it down. And I'm just gonna kind of rough trace it on here because I just want my, my shape. going around Get my magnets do you all hear that do you hear Tilly over there I bought him these new treats and they're from milk bone they're like these little bone marrow treats and they're bacon flavor and I think they put something addicting in there because he really loves them and he's always begging for them. And of course, every time he goes outside, he comes in and he knows he always gets a treat and I didn't give him a treat yet. So he's gonna have to wait a minute. Just a minute, baby. I'm gonna get my 
my cattail here. I'm gonna finish the head and uh, get to fully a treat, and I'll be back. I've got my pieces all rough cut out on my heat mount. I just traced my patterns on, as you can see. I did the head, I got the body. So I'm going to place my pieces on the wrong side of my fabric. As you can see, this is the gray that I chose for the body. And I'm going to have the rough side down and we're going to put this on the body. And I just cut off a little piece, trying not to waste too much of my fabric. And then, of course, I will make room here for my head. Now, the piece on the mouth, I cut that out, and I put it on the wrong side of the gray. Same way with the nose piece. I just cut out a little piece of pink, and I've just rough cut out the nose. And the little heart, I found a nice little piece of red, and I've got the little heart. So that this is all going to go on the wrong side of the fabric and then we'll proceed to cut it out. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna have some scrap pieces from this. So I'm just gonna kind of put my iron on here and just leave it on for a few seconds and move it along until it is all nicely adhered down. Just like that. Oh, here comes my mother-in-law. So I got the head here. I'm going to um, press this down. Hopefully my iron's still hot. I'm just going to press that down until she's nice and sticky. And I think she's on. And we'll cut those. So I got these little pieces here. And we're just going to press these on real quick. And then we'll get on to cutting them. So just a few seconds. glue gets nice and hot. All right, now it's on to pressing. All right, I got everything all cut out. This is where the fun's really gonna begin. So you can see I've got the cute little butt all cut out. And I've also got the face. And we are going to layer this stuff together. So I'm gonna bring you down and show you. And you've got the little heart. So. Let's move you down here to the ironing board. Oops, wrong button. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see. I've been, maybe I should raise that up just a little bit so you kind of get, sorry, wiggly jiggly here. Okay, so you can kind of see what I got going on here. Oh, let me see if I can move this back just a little bit. Okay, that's good. So I'm wanting my cat to be kind of off center. I don't want him in the middle. I kind of want him down to the side. And another thing to check for is make sure that your fold is at the bottom because this is going to be a flat bag and I want my fold at the bottom and I want his feet to be kind of close to the bottom because this top part, I'm going to have a little bit of the, the liner showing. So I think I don't want him too close to the edge, but I kind of want him over here off to the side. It'll be really cute. And then they have room for his head and his head will be layered underneath. So first thing we need to do is um, peel the paper off the back of our fabric. And I just kind of kind of flick it and uh, get that paper loosened up. And then you can just peel the paper off and it'll be all nice and shiny underneath because that's where your glue is. And when you heat it all up, it will um, glue it down. So I'm just gonna position everything how I want it. And you know, probably notice um, everything is opposite from the way I drawed my pattern. So my pattern had the tail going the other way. Um, when you transfer something, you have to, um, you know, figure out which way you want it. I could have turned my pattern over to the other side and had my tail going the other way, but to me, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna get his feet down kind of close to the fold here. So, and I have him not too close to the side because you're gonna have seam allowance there. So he'll be right along the edge. So yeah, that's right where I want him. I kind of want him in the corner of my bag. And then my little heart here, 
this is totally up to you where you want to put your heart. You know, you could put it <laughs> right for his butt. You could put it off to the side. Um, it really doesn't matter. And the picture on Pinterest, it was off to the side, but I kind of like the little heart. <laughs> I just think it looks really cute because it is kind of a cat butt. So I'm going to leave mine in the middle. And then I'm going to get my pieces on my paper off my head pieces because these are all going to be layered. And the nose here, this is a really tiny piece. That's why I cut this one out first. I didn't really want you to see me cut that out. Not that it was any big deal, but um, I don't know. <laughs> it's just really tiny. But the cutting process, you all know how to do the cutting. I just like to throw it in there to kind of show you how I do it. But it's really me doing all of this, not some elf behind the scenes. You know, I do everything. So I want his head. I don't want it to overlap his body because he's looking back. So you know you want your head to kind of be... And I want it to be kind of down here on the side because it looks like he's kind of hunched over with his head peeking around his backside. And then of course his, his little mug piece here, this is gonna go on the bottom and I want to line it up with my circle piece and I don't want any gray showing from that. So I wanted to position that down so it's just hidden behind his body. So he, you can't see his whole head. He is, he is, looking, he is looking back. And then of course his little nose piece, I'm going to layer that down in that little valley of his mug. And it'll be hidden under there just a little bit. Because cats have like that triangle, and I'm getting it down there too deep. They have that little triangular nose. And I think that's just about right. I don't want that gray to show. So I have to kind of manipulate a little bit. And I'm gonna be stitching this down all the way around and my nose is kind of sticking out. So. Before you press that hot iron on everything, make sure everything is just the way you want it, because once it's down, it's down. And it's, it'll be glued, so. I think that's perfect. I wanna make sure everything is laying nice and flat, so that's his tail, his little butt. And of course, like I said, I'll be making some whiskers on him. And I will probably stitch this down. I wanna make sure his feet are straight because it doesn't look like he's quite straight here. Just want to make sure he is the way I want him before I press him down. And I even said that I might put a uh, little chenille. I have some pink, and if you don't know what that is, it's Blooming Bias and you can get it on um, Etsy. And Hobby Lobby used to carry it and I bought out a bunch of it when it was on clearance. I don't know if they're still selling it, but um, I have a bunch of it that was that was salvaged out of my house fire. So because it was in a plastic bag and it was in a drawer, I guess, or something. So I have I have some left, and I think I will put some in his ears. So I'm ready to um, press down. So I'm just gonna kind of hold for a few seconds and let this heat up so everything is nice and in place. And I really don't wanna swish my iron around because I don't wanna push anything. So I'm just kind of picking it up and, and setting it down so everything gets stuck down. So everything will stay in place really nice when I go to stitch it down. This is gonna be so much fun. And the receiver of this gift is going to love it. I guarantee it. It is just so adorable and whimsical. And yeah. So what I would like to do, I'm not sure. I have white thread in my Juki and I have, I'm not sure what color on my Bernina, but it's all set up over there. When I stitch the heart down, I'm going to do that in some red thread. So I'll probably do that over on the Bernina. Same way with the pink, I might have to change threads. So what I will do is I will get started on the Juki with this light gray here because it looks like he's got a white face. Um, I think I might do gray for the body, so I might have to set up the Bernina, but that's going to be the next step. So I'll take you over to the machine. Okay, I just wanted to show you real quick when I was talking about blooming bias. It is this stuff here, and uh, it's called chenillet. And really is what it is, is just this thin stuff, and it's very gauzy. So when you sew it on... Um, I just wanted to show you, I've got one ear done and I just thought I have to show you this because you can see here, I've just 
layered it in three little triangles and I sewed it right up the middle and then I just took my fingers and I rubbed it up and it makes the most fuzziest little ear inside and it just gives it that extra touch. So really this is all I did. I just cut up little three little tiny triangles and I layered them together and I will sew it right in the middle and then I will just fray it with my fingers and it'll just, and it makes a lot of fuzz, but the effect is adorable. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Uh, I'll finish sewing this up and then I'll get back to you. So I finished my handles and you can see here, I kind of got them folded in half. I folded these in half and I cut these down to 33 and a half inches only because I want to leave a little bit sticking up on the inside of my seam so that um, I make sure that they're caught. So I measured them three and a quarter from the outside corners. Oh, here, let me move you down so you can kind of see. Let's see, where am I down here? Okay. So you can see here, let me get my stuff out of the way. I have measured in three and a quarter on each side. And when I touch it up to the edge, I got three and a quarter. So I know that is right where I want to position my handles. And I probably should stitch these in place so just to keep them in place so when I um, sew my liner, because that's going to be the next step. So um, I'm going to attach these on the other side, and I'm going to stay stitching them across. And then I will get to uh, putting the liner rear in the home stretch of this bag. This is going to be so adorably cute. <laughs> and I cannot wait to get this done. Um, the last thing will... Well, before I put my liner, I probably should put the eyes on. Um, let me pick out some buttons and put some button eyes on it. Eyes are totally up to you, but I think some button eyes on there would look really cute. So I'm going to get with this. So like I said, real simple. These are very thin handles. Make your handles the way you want them. Um, three and a quarter inches from each side with about an inch, maybe a little inch and a quarter sticking up above the top of my bag so I can make sure that I catch it when I sew everything together. So we'll get on to that step. All right, I got my handles in place on my bag. Um, don't be like me and sew over your pins because uh, I didn't pull a pin out and I sewed and I broke a needle. So I had to take the whole machine uh, apart and find the tip of the needle that uh, I thought it went down in the machine. I got kind of nervous, but um, gave me a good reason to clean it because it did need some cleaning. I had a lot of dust in it and everything. So I found um, the needle after I pulled out the bobbin case and you know I was checking and it fell on the floor. So I found it and put it all in the needle jar. So I keep my used needles in a jar. I don't ever throw them in my garbage can because um, if you're pushing down your garbage or you're taking care of your garbage, you don't want to poke your fingers with needles or pins or anything. So I always keep an old jar in here with a lid on it to keep my used needles and broken pins or whatever in so it's just a great little tip uh, another thing when you're putting on your handles and you're lining them up and pin them make sure that you don't get them twisted check them before you stitch them in place so that you know everything um is you know together correctly without getting something twisted it's just one of them little details um to pay attention to ask me how i know so um I'm thinking, how do I want to do this? Because I made this longer than my bag because I want it to stick up a little bit. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to sew my sides together and then I'm going to stitch this around the top only because I don't want to sew it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I think, yes. Don't pay any attention to me. I don't know what I'm doing. So, um, okay, this is what we do, I think, yes. I'm going to take my lining, let me move you down here. So let's see, which way do we go? This way. So you can kind of see what we got going on here. So what I've done is I've made my lining a longer than the outside. But if I sew these across the top first, um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Normally I would sew the, the sides of the lining and leave a hole and then I would stitch it around the top, but I'm trying to make this easier. So, um, I want to make my 
I have that extra so that my lining sticks up over the top. So I want to sew it. Yeah, maybe I should, I'm gonna start at one end of this first. I'm gonna sew this end first. And yeah, let me sew this end first so I can fold it right side over and see how far I need, and then I can press it to where I know how far it's gonna stick up. I know this sounds strange, but just let me do that. <laughs> Okay, I think I've got this figured out. It takes me a hot minute. So I've sewed um, the top and bottom on both sides. I've sewed my liner to the top of the outside of the bag on each side. And what I've done is now I've got my liner sewed to the outside of the bag. And really now what I want to do is line up my seams until they meet. And I think I'm a little rusty at this because I'm like, what is wrong with me? I couldn't figure it out how I did this. So... So right now I'm just matching up the seams so that they line up perfectly. And that's important to um, have your bag come together nicely. You want them seams to meet. And with these handles in here, it just makes them like it doesn't want to cooperate with me. So I'm just going to get my clip ready so I can get that lined up. So when I sew it, I will have that little accent at the top. I guess I've been under pressure all day and I just can't think straight, but we got her now. So there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of clips and I'm gonna leave a hole in the side of my bag so I can turn it. So I'm gonna put these two here and I'm gonna put them right there. So I'm gonna leave that hole there to um, turn my bag and I need a few more clips. So I'm gonna clip this together because I'm gonna sew this all, the, well, on both sides. The bottoms are already closed because we have that fold on the end. So we don't have to worry about the bottom. We just have to worry about the sides. So I'm leaving one hole in the side of my liner and that's gonna be my turning, my turning um, spot to turn my bag right side out. So we are in the home stretch of this. I'm so excited to show you this cute little bag. I think this would make a great gift to throw some gifts in and carry around. <laughs> so uh, let me get this sewed up and we will turn it right side out and I'll show you the finished result. I'm so excited. All right, my friends, I've got it together and turned. Is this the cutest thing you ever did see? Um, I need to top stitch it all the way around the top because um, you can see I have, uh, if I can hold this up right, I have the accent of the liner sticking out the top so it matches the handles and I still need to put some eyes on it. I, can, I haven't sewed the inside of the hole up yet so um, I can turn it right side out and stitch some little eyes on there. I could grab some and kind of give you an idea of how it will look. But um, it's been a long day. This has been a fun project. Besides all the mishaps and you know the visitors that I've had today, I think this bag is really cute and I think it would make a fantastic gift, especially with the plaid. Tie a little bow around the handle and you have a great gift, a gift to November. So if you enjoyed my little video here today, and I will show some pictures at the end, please like, please subscribe, please share with your friends. Uh, I'm gonna work on getting the pattern up for you, um, for the cat butt kitty. <laughs> um, this could be put on anything um, besides a bag. I mean, I don't know, the ideas are endless. You, this would make a great little pillow. Um, you could put it on your an applique for your quilt. Um, it's just all in fun. So I would love to know your thoughts on this, your ideas. I do have to stitch some whiskers on him yet, but this is just something great that you can play with. So. Um, I hope you enjoy and I hope you make one and fill yours with goodies and give it to that special someone that loves a kitty. All right, take care for now. I will chat at you later. Bye.